story then, we actually shared our stories with each other. And I just remember how much it motivated me to hear his story because he has a similar story to mine. Um, and I remember going home and, and just how motivated I was. And when I heard his story in that audio that night, it was just a couple weeks ago actually, it motivated me to write out the email and actually respond <laughs> and say, yes, I'll get on stage and I'll, and I'll do this because I wanted to come out here and I wanted to inspire any one of you with, with my story. And I just realized how powerful a story could be in that moment. Um, because I wouldn't have got started in Power Network if it wasn't for meeting David Sharp that day, before Empower Network ever started. Um, because, you know, he's the one that sent me the email, or sent me a Facebook message saying, hey, you know, check out this company. And it was because he had told me his story and I had so much trust and, and so much respect for him that I actually got started in this company um, at that moment. And he's the reason why I'm on stage right now, because just a couple weeks ago I listened to his audio and that got me on stage. So. I'm just so happy to be here um, to be able to, I guess, bring this message to you guys today. So, when um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you my story, but I want to take you way back because a lot of you guys have probably heard a little bit of my story. You've heard um, kind of the, the condensed down version. You know, it's, it's kind of easy to make a sales video and let everybody see it. It's just the the most positive part. It's the success story. You know, it's really easy to tell your success, but it's kind of hard to tell your your struggle that was before that. So. Mine starts, I want to take you back to high school because it, I really want you to understand where I was before and then where I went and how I got here. So back in high school, I was pretty successful, I guess, for, as, a, as a kid. I had a really good um, upbringing, like my, my parents were very positive. I had, you know, we were kind of middle class family, so I never really wanted for anything. So it's not a rags to riches story, but um, I, uh, I was involved in a lot of things. I, I was involved in a lot of sports. I was involved in choir, show choir. Um, I was an Eagle Scout, so I knew you guys didn't know what, what Boy Scouts is. I was right, I took the, you know, reached the highest level in, in Boy Scouts. So I, I did a lot of things. I did a lot of community service and just had a really positive upbringing. Um, got good grades and everything like that. And then I was planning to go to college. I was planning to go um, be a, a computer engineer at Iowa State University. And I really wanted to do that, and I, I kind of worked hard to get there. Um, and then something happened. It's probably happened to a lot of you guys. I actually went to a meeting in a hotel room, <laughs> and <laughs> that meeting changed my life. You know, I was sitting in the front row, it was an Amway meeting, of course, uh, the guy was drawing the circles, you know, he was, he was talking about dreams and uh, talking about how, you know, a lot of people, they don't, they don't have dreams anymore, and they, they just, you know, they go through life and they kind of follow this path that's been set for them, um, and I decided that day that I was going to be an entrepreneur. You know, that's, that's what really motivated, motivated me to be an entrepreneur. And I started listening to the audios. I started going through the motions of changing my mindset. Um, and I decided that I didn't want to go to the big university. I actually went to a community college and I got a really good job. So I got a job working for a company called US Cellular and doing sales. And I was going full time there and full time in college. And I was working really hard. I was making like 50 or 60 grand a year in college. So it's kind of crazy. I was making really good money. Um, and I was learning a lot of stuff, so I kind of knew if I wanted to be an entrepreneur, um, I needed to learn sales skills because I got an Amway and I wasn't that successful because I didn't really know how to sell. So I, you know, I got in there, I was in it for a couple months and I didn't know how to sell anything, so I just kind of, you know, petered off and went to actually doing sales and learning sales. Um, and when I was doing that job, like I said, I was doing it very successfully and I was top sales like for an almost an entire year. I was one of their top salesmen. And there was this guy that worked um, he worked really, he worked near us. He was a very successful entrepreneur. He owned a bunch of businesses. And he came into the store one day, and we, were, we just got to talking, and we hit it off. He was about, he was a very young entrepreneur. He was like 28, something like that. I think he was 28 when I first met him. And he owned a couple clubs downtown. I lived in a big party town, so I lived in uh, Iowa City. Any of you guys know the Hawkeyes? It's like the number one party yeah. university right now, so <laughs> that's where I lived. Um, and so he owned, he owned a couple of the clubs, he owned a bunch of shops in the mall. So I just kind of started to try and get around him. I tried to get within, you know, in his presence all the time. I, I started, you know, we kind of hit it off and we started hanging out. And uh, there was a whole summer where we hung out all summer. I mean, it was like, it was, it was kind of like heaven for me. You know, I was, I was in the presence of this really successful entrepreneur, and he, you know, he had this crazy lifestyle. You know, the lifestyle that we talk about all the time, where we have all this freedom, and we would go on and out on his boat every day. And he owned all these clubs, so all the girls from the clubs would come with us, and it was like this crazy party, you know, um, like spring break all all summer long. <laughs> so it was it was a really fun summer, but I just didn't understand how he got there. You know, he was so young, and he had all this success, and he told me that he came from nothing. So one day we were out on the boat alone, and I asked him, 
how he got there, you know, how did you get started, how do you do this? And I still remember, he was so serious, he looked me in the eyes, and he was like, do you want to lie or the truth? And I was like, what? <laughs> I had no idea what he was talking about, and I was like, well, obviously I want the truth, man, we're, we're friends, tell me the truth of how you, how you got to where you are. And he started explaining this business model to me, and he, it was almost like I was back in the Amway meeting, you know, he was drawing the circles. <laughs> He was like, well, you know, we have this product, and I built this huge network when I was in college, and I, um, it's high, you know, high profit margins, high demand, residual income. He started talking about all the stuff that we talk about, and um, then he said one last thing that just didn't really click with me that I didn't get, and he said, but you don't have to pay taxes, and I was like, well, what, you know, what does that mean? <laughs> and. Um, and then he went on to, anybody have any idea what he was selling? <laughs> uh, he, was, he was selling marijuana, obviously. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but, uh, so, I mean, really the, the story goes, he was in college, he built this huge network and he had all this money, he had all this cash, and he dropped out of college and started businesses. So, you know, he had, you know, the typical front for, for his big drug business was all of the, all of the entrepreneurial businesses and having all these clubs and things like that. So I was kind of naive and young, and, and he told me that he would mentor me and he would show me how to create the life that he did. So I got, I got, I know, I know. I got, I got led down a path that, you know, I, I could have went one direction. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to own businesses. And I, I looked up to this guy as a mentor. You know, I, he took me on as my mentor and he led me down a path where within a year I was, almost in the exact same position as him. I was kind of like Scarface. I was like, I had this, <laughs> I seriously, I had like a, a network of people, like all of Iowa was, you know, the, all of the colleges, all the major colleges, distributors everywhere. And it sounds like an MLM business, you know, it's the same type of idea. <laughs> he went out and networked with a bunch of people and things like that, and it just blew up. And, but I, obviously it was not where I wanted to be after a while, I figured it out that it wasn't where I wanted to be. And there's a few specific things that happened that made me realize that. You know, I was kind of on top of the world for a while. For a couple months, I was making fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month and doing really well. Um, but then things started to kind of fall apart. Like I, the, the first thing that happened was my girlfriend at the time called me and she said that she was pregnant. And it was, it was kind of a, a really big shock for me. Um, I was I was at a party at that time and I was really messed up. I, I started to get into like you know all the things that um, all the parties and, and stuff like that. And started going really downhill. And when she called me, I was just in like a really bad place. And when she told me that, I broke down. Like I got off the phone and I, I broke down and I realized it, it just kind of all hit me at once how I had gone, how how far in the wrong direction I had gone, um, and how how much I had lost my dreams. Like what what I really wanted. I really wanted to have a family. I really wanted to be able to raise children and do what my parents did for me. So when that happened, I realized that I had to make a change. I realized that I had to start changing things in my life and get back on the right path. But it was hard. You know, I was, I was addicted to that lifestyle. I was addicted to the money, the, just the party, all of it. And I started listening to the Amway tapes again. And I think this is kind of what, what got me through. And that's why the inner circle is so important uh, to what we do is it can just get you back on the right path. Like I said, that's why I'm here today is because I listened to an inner circle audio from David, from David Sharp. And it got me here today. And I think those Amway things are sort of moving me back in the right direction. And what got me, another thing that got me here today, it always comes back to just training your mind. And that's what's going to get you to where you want to go. So I started listening to those tapes again. But like I said, I was, I was very deep in it. I mean, I was, I was just very addicted to that lifestyle. And it took a few other things happening for me to really realize that I had to get out of it. I had to put it behind me. Um, one of them was a lot of my friends started going to jail. So I, you know, a lot of them started getting caught and things like that. And a lot, it was just started kind of falling apart. And I was very close to going to prison a lot of times. I mean, I, I was literally running from the cops at, at points and I could have gone to prison in that moment. Like I could not be here today because I'd be in prison. Um, another thing that happens is I got robbed for all my money. <laughs> so one day I had about $80,000 in a safe. Some people came into my house right after I left. I was gone 20 minutes. When I got back, it was gone. So everything I had worked for for that entire year was gone in an instant. Not like this, you know, not like a business like this that you build. That type of business, everything was gone in an instant. And that's when I really realized I had to do something. I started looking online. I knew that there was MLM businesses. I started looking for a way to make money online or to do something else because I had no money. 
I was like, I was in a place where I had to make a change. And I found Mark Hoverson and Jonathan Budd. How many of you guys know who those guys are? Yeah. Oh, some of those guys. So I found those guys, and um, my dad helped me out a lot. I had no money at that point. I had told myself that I wasn't going to do anything in that business anymore, so I had no way of making money either. And my dad helped me get started in a real business, in, in an online business, and buy some products. And um, he actually helped me get to my first event, which, is, which was a Mark Hoverson event in Phoenix. And right before I was supposed to go to that event, the day before, actually, I, um, I got pulled over. So, like, you know, the cops had been, knew who I was. They absolutely knew who I was at that point. They were just waiting to pull me over for something. <laughs> so they pulled me over, and they, you know, they stripped the car down completely, found enough to be able to take me to jail, and questioned me and all this kind of stuff. So, so I went to jail the day before my first event for a marijuana possession. It was just a tiny amount, so it didn't really matter, but they just wanted to get me there somehow. Um, so they got me there, and I was just I was just kind of like laying in that jail cell, <laughs> and that night because I, I didn't think I was going to get to go to the event. I was really bummed. I was, it was like one of my lowest points ever because I thought that again that this this situation was going to pull me down and I wasn't going to be able to get to where I wanted to go in life because of it. So I was just laying there, and I just made a commitment right there. I was laying on the floor in the cold jail cell, and I just made a commitment that if I, if I got out of here, I was going to absolutely make a change in my life. Um, yeah, that event. Like, if I got to go to that event the next day, that was going to be it. I was going to be done with everything, and I was going to come out of that event a new man. And um, the next morning, somehow, they, they let me out, <laughs> and my dad came and he bailed me out. I think that's the only reason I got out. He probably paid them to get me out or something, but um, and he, he took me straight to the airport, and me and him flew to that event together. And um, he, you know, he, he paid for everything, obviously. He didn't actually say a word about it. He didn't, he didn't say anything, he didn't scold me or anything, he, he just said, are you ready to do this now? I mean, he was, he was always my biggest, um, my biggest supporter. Like, he was, uh, yeah. And that event completely changed me. Um, one of the big things that I remember, and I, I still remember it to this day, and it, it hits me all the time, is, is when Mark actually he spent some time with me, and he kind of really took me under his wing at that event. He didn't know anything about me. He doesn't know this story to this day. But he took me under his wing at that event and just kind of became my mentor, and I really started looking up to him. And I, I got a new mentor at that event. That was the biggest thing that changed my life, is just getting away from the old mentor and getting, getting to the one that's actually positive that was going to take me in the right direction. Um, and when we did that... He, he actually took me outside, and I remember him looking me in the eyes and just saying, I believe in you, and I know that you can do this. And he didn't know anything about me. He didn't know where I came from. He just saw it in my eyes that I had what it took to do this business and, and to, you know, he knew that I wanted it really bad. And he changed me. He has no idea to this day how much that impacted my life, but that was the biggest moment for me that changed my life was just someone saying that I can do it. And that's why we say it so much to you guys that you can do it is because we know that you can because we've been there. We've been super low. Like, I mean, that's as low as it goes, being in a jail cell right before your first event and then, you know, having a breakthrough the next day. Um, and so when he said that to me, there's a couple other things that he said at that event. I'm, I'm going to talk about them here in a minute. But um, that was the main thing that really changed it for me, is just the belief, the belief in myself that I could actually do something besides what I was doing before. Um, and, and I started doing it after that. As soon as I left that event, I got rid of everyone, you know, all the, all the toxic relationships, the toxic things that were taking me, that were holding me back. That was one of the other main things he talked about, is getting rid of anything negative in your life that's going to hold you back from getting to your, to your dreams, to your goals, and all those things. And um, as soon as I got rid of those things, like I actually had to get rid of my phone. Like I had to, I mean, I had the, all these numbers, all these people that I connected with over the past year and a half or whatever, um, and build this huge network. And I literally had to get a different phone <laughs> so that I could just put the positive people in there and completely get rid of all the bad. And uh, when I did that, it's funny, no, none of those people contacted me again. <laughs> it was like, you know, I was there for one thing, one thing only, and that was it. And as soon as I got rid of them, my life completely started to change. Everything started to be positive. I started moving towards my goals. I started, I got a different job because at that point I was unemployable. I had, you know, I had no income and I had a marijuana possession. So I, no one was going to hire me. Like I couldn't get into a sales job. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do the job that I had before, you know, the sales job that I had before. I dropped that because I started making $20,000 a month in the other business. So I dropped the sales job that was making me 60 grand a year. Um, and I couldn't get that type of job again, so I had to go out and find a different way to do it. 
And what I did, and you know, this is something a lot of you guys could do as well, is I went out and I started putting ads on Craigslist. Like I, I really started hustling to be able to have a legitimate life and make, you know, make a lot of money doing it. And I went out and I started painting for a living. So every day I would go out and I would paint, I would paint the insides of houses. And you can do anything, like there's all kinds of work you can get on Craigslist or wherever if you want to make extra money for your business. But I started going out and I would paint in the morning, so I would listen literally to audios all day long. And I would change my mind and I would listen to audios and I would paint for most of the day. And then I would go and I would work on my business at night. And when I did that, my mind completely transformed. Everything that was negative before went to positive. Like, you'll ask, she asked Meg, my, my fiance, everything that I talk about now is like, I never, almost never have negative things that come out of my mouth. It's always just like, think of the positive, think of the positive, like this can be positive, whatever. And it's because I listen to audios all the time and I, I went through that transformation. Um, and let's, let's actually go in, I only have about 10 minutes, so I wanna go into some of the things that, that I learned from Mark just over the years because it's been very, impactful in, in just my journey, um, or some of the lessons that he actually taught me. Um, so I just want to go through some of that stuff with you guys real quick. So lesson number one, always plan your success. Uh, this was something that he taught right away, and um, I, I took it to heart. And I really, everyone in this company has, has uh, talked about it as well. It, it's really, you have to break down your goals. You set the long-term goals, obviously you have your dream board, you do all those things so that you have long-term goals. But then you also have the short-term goals, uh, like weekly, monthly goals, like you're hitting your monthly income goals, and then your daily goals. I think the daily goals are the most important. And these are the ones that have really that will really push you to actually hitting the big goals, or is it you set the tiny little daily goals? And if you're just getting started, it might be just to have some conversations with people and have them be positive, because you just don't necessarily know how to talk to people yet. So if you're just getting started, go out and talk to some people on Facebook and have positive conversations, because those positive conversations will turn into leads. So like maybe your second day, your goal is to get a couple leads. And then you have another daily goal of getting a sale. You, know, you, you have some of these conversations and they turn into a sale. So start with the small daily goals and work up to bigger daily goals. Because that's what's gonna actually get you to the big goals, like the, the 10, 20, $30,000 a month that, ever, that the leaders up here were making. So that's what really got me to be successful is focusing on daily, not trying to focus on, I wanna make $20,000 a month and not having a plan to do it actually have a plan to hit two sales a day, one sale a day, whatever it is that you think you can do right at the beginning, just hit, set those small goals and just try and hit them. Do whatever you can to hit them. Never stop until you hit them. If your goal is one sale a day, work until you hit one sale a day and then start over the next day. Like it's always focus on the small goals because those are what's gonna get you into the big ones. Um, and then like I said, break them down into exact numbers. So like if you wanna make $100 a day, focus on making $100 a day until you hit it. And then, then you can go on to the next day. Then you can plan your next day what you're going to do to get $100 or $150 the next day. Let's see if I can work this out. There we go. <laughs> Lesson number two is balance. And this, was, this is huge. This is probably bigger than anything else in here. If you want to actually have a successful business and, and be, have a fulfilling life and have freedom and all these things, you need to make sure that you have balance in your life and you schedule everything. So everything in your day should be scheduled out. You should know what you're gonna do in the morning, what you're gonna do at noon, what you're gonna do at night, every single day, so you don't forget the different things in your life. So you can focus on everything. See, there's three main pieces to this. Your, yourself, your work, and your relationships, with like your family, your friends, and things like that. You wanna make sure that you're focused on all of them, not just one or the other. You have to, you know, it's all about balance. Gosh, if you work all the time, I remember I used to work all the time. I, I would work morning, noon, night, and I would completely neglect my family. I would completely neglect my little girl. Like, I, I mean, when she was very, very young, I was working all the time because I, that's what I thought I had to do. And then I learned about balance and I was like, wow, I'm, I'm wrecking my relationship. I'm, I'm wrecking my, you know, my time with my daughter. I just didn't have it. And that's what I wanted. That's, that's the whole goal of having the business is to have more time and to have more freedom, but I didn't have it because I didn't, I didn't focus on balance. I didn't schedule my day so that I would actually have blocks of time for my family. Okay, so first thing, uh, how to maximize yourself, which just goes down to maximizing your energy. So the first thing that I always do in the morning is focus on health and energizing my body. So it's do some kind of exercise. It doesn't matter what it is. If you don't feel like you can do that much, don't just do what you can. You know, do some push-ups, do some jumping jacks, whatever it is, to just get the oxygen flowing. Because that's what's gonna give you the energy to actually you know, show up and be successful in your business. And the second thing is diet. You don't have to go crazy. I mean, if you, <laughs> if you, you don't have to radically change your diet to be successful, but it's going to help your energy. 
That's the biggest thing we're going for here is just how to maximize your energy so that you can actually show up and be really, really productive in your business. Um, so I always have a morning shake. I put a lot of really good, you know, really good greens and things like that in the shake and protein powder. So that way when I hit the computer, I actually have the energy to put it in. So it, it just works really well. I always eat light meals, so that way I don't feel heavy sitting at the computer and like falling asleep on the desk. You know? <laughs> so it just helps if you have that energy to put into it. And then anytime that you're not feeling like you have energy, just drink some water or do some kind of, do something to get uh, your, your blood pumping, to get you know, more oxygen into your body. Do some sit-ups or some push-ups or jumping jacks or whatever. If you're feeling groggy, always do that. So I'll just like drop down and do 10 push-ups. If, if I'm feeling like I just don't have like the energy to do something or I need to take a break, then I'll just drop down and do that. Um, and then always do mindset. So my morning consists of health and mindset in the morning. And I know most of you guys do too because it's part of our ACOR commitments. But just always have the positive coming in and do whatever you can to keep the negative out. So keep, you know, keep the TV off, keep the news off, obviously, since all this shit that's going on right now. Um, just get, keep all the negative out and only take positive in all the time. And it's going to help you so much. Um, how to maximize your productivity. So this was something I learned very early on and it helped me so much. Um, just to get out of the things that weren't actually producing any results. So having a daily method of operation, and this, this goes into scheduling as well, um, having certain things that you do every single day, no matter what. It's just like, you know, in the morning I do my mindset. You know, during the day I, I do my whatever it is. If you do Facebook, if you create a video, if you do your blogging, you do all that stuff right after you do your, you know, your, your mindset stuff. So that way you have the energy, the mental energy, and you're kind of fired up. You know, after I do my mindset training, it's like you're fired up to go and work. You're fired up to create a video. You're fired up to create content so that you can actually you know, do what's best and, and get it done really fast. That's kind of the, the point of all this is to have freedom. So getting it done really fast is kind of the, the key, right? <laughs> it's like the goal. Um, so being able to schedule that stuff and do it, you know, doing it as quick as possible is what's going to produce the best results. Um, I always work in time blocks. So 50, do or 50 minute time blocks. So if I have a video to do, a blog post to do, um, and, and then like, you know, if you connect with people on Facebook or whatever, break it into different blocks. So it's like this 50 minutes, I'm gonna do this task. Then I'm gonna, you know, get rejuvenated. I'm gonna do some, you know, some, some sit-ups or some jumping jacks or whatever, and then I'm gonna go into the next task. Make sure you take a break in between so that you kind of clear your mind of that task and move on to the next one. Um, and then, like I said, bursts of oxygen, and then another thing that helps a lot is journaling. So at night, if you're struggling with sleeping or the mind races, like entrepreneurs' minds race like crazy. I mean, like I'll, I'll stay up all night some nights if I don't journal and write everything down that I'm thinking because my mind will just keep thinking about it, thinking about it. And the worst part is if you have great ideas at night, you'll forget them in the morning. So if you don't write them down, they're pretty much just lost. You can just count them as gone because you'll forget them. I forget ideas all the time. If I forget a night of journaling, I regret it the next day because all those ideas are just gone. <laughs> there we go. And then the last thing, uh, enjoy the things you love. So, I mean, you do this business for a reason. Um, you have to block out that time to actually spend with your family, your friends, doing your hobbies. Um, and then make sure that you're completely plugging out. Like I struggled with this so much when I first started focusing on getting the family time in, is I would still think about business. You know, I, I would be like completely disconnected. I'd be there with them, we'd be at dinner or playing or something, and I'd be standing off in the corner thinking, like what's gonna happen to my business when I get back? What am I gonna do when I get back? And I, would, I just wouldn't completely plug out. So just make sure you completely plug out so you can get that good quality time and you, know, you can have that freedom like you really want. Now the third lesson that he taught me is leverage. And this is another really important one, um, especially if you wanna have freedom, is you have to build leverage into your business, and you have to automate the things. Most of it is automated by Empower, like a lot of things are automated by Empower, but you can do a lot more um, with yourself. Like you can schedule the emails, so like every single Sunday, and I, I actually have someone that does this for me now, I don't even send my own emails anymore just because I, I focus on leverage so much. Um, but you can schedule all your emails in one day. That's kind of the point of the autoresponder, right? You can take a Sunday and you can schedule your emails for the entire week if you want to. Um, and that's what I do. I schedule every single email is scheduled on Sunday. I send it to my assistant. She schedules every single one for the entire week. And the point is that I never have to think about it. So like the entire week, when I wake up in the morning, I don't think about sending an email. I don't, I don't ever even touch email until the afternoon. So it's, it just helps free your mind so that you can think about other things by scheduling all that stuff and automating everything. It's kind of a pain. Um, because when I used to send emails myself in the morning, it sucked. Every single morning I'd wake up and be like, what am I going to send today? 
It just, it, just, it just drains your mind knowing that you have to wake up and try and think about writing an email. So it just helps so much to just spend that focused time. And it helps with productivity too, because you can spend all that time on a Sunday and just focus on the emails in that block of time. So I'll, I'll spend two hours or whatever I used to before I sent it to my assistant. And uh, I would uh, just spend it on emails. Uh, another thing is for just on the same subject is auto responses. So make sure that you're giving people direct, like you always set up your auto response on your email. So if somebody sends you an email asking a question, you have a response that goes back to them that gives them a direct action. So it sends them to a video. It sends them to some kind of information that's going to point them in the right direction so that you don't have to every single time. Because if then you see that email then and it's you know basically exactly the answer, you, you would send the exact auto response back to them, they already got the answer. So you don't have to do anything. It saves you time. Um, and eventually that's something you can have an assistant do as well. Um, and then voicemail. So make sure that you set up your voicemail the same way so that it gives them a direct action. It sends them to a video. It sends them to send you an email if you don't want to get voicemails or whatever. Just make sure that instead of saying, oh, just leave me whatever message you want, you're telling them exactly what to leave you and exactly where to go after they leave you a message. Um, focus on your strengths. Uh, this is huge for leverage, and this, this goes into just getting people to do the things you don't want to do. Like, I don't send emails. I don't even you know, write the blog posts or anything like that. Someone does all of that stuff because I focus on only my strengths. My strength is not writing, so I just don't do that. Um, and I get someone else to do it. So delegate everything, same exact thing uh, that we pretty much just talked about. And then this is, this is a really powerful thing I learned early on, um, and any of you guys can do this. It doesn't matter how big your team is, how big your list is, is you can get rid of the virtual assistants. So like, you know, the thought of...